both going to be discussing the millennial reign of our Lord Jesus Christ today. So the Bible teaches that there will be a time where the Lord Jesus Christ will reign on this earth. And um, this is something that I am looking forward to very much as a saved man who is trusted in Christ as my savior. Now, the Bible prophesied this in the Old Testament, although not in specific terms. But um, uh, now if we go to a Revelation uh, chapter 20, right? Uh, you know, we see that during the thousand year, thousand year reign, Satan will be bound up and uh, imprisoned in a bottomless pit. And he would he will no longer be able to, you know, deceive mankind. And uh, who will be reign, ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ? His saints, you know, not only um, uh, the saints who were uh, be martyred during the tribulation for his sake, but also those who died prior to the rapture of the church, in addition to those who were taken up in the rapture, right? And so, so, so the Bible is very clear that saved people, all saved people up until that point, will rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years by. Because verse 6 says, Blessed is whole and holy is he that hath upon the first resurrection on such, the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So the Bible says, hath part of the first resurrection. What does that mean? Right? First resurrection, that means that those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, right, they will not be subject to the second death, right, which is eternity in hell, right, as we will see in chapter 21, right? But the, they shall be priests of God and of Christ that shall reign with him a thousand years. So this, and, and of course, after the thousand year reign, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. He will lead um, the nations to go attack Israel, right? The beloved city, of course, refers to Jerusalem. But um, the Lord Jesus Christ promises to destroy them. And after that, Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone to be tormented forever and ever. And after that, we will have the great white throne judgment and in which the unsaved people, you know, the dead, right, will be judged according to their works. And unsurprisingly, all of them will be thrown into hell because none of them hits hit, have none of them hit God's standards, you know, for salvation, for heaven. None of us hit God's standards for salvation, for heaven. Only Jesus Christ does. You know, it's only through trusting him that we get saved. And now to give you a little, guys a little bit of context, right? So. You know, uh, we, in the previous chapter, we read about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ after the seven year tribulation, right? Including three and a half year rule, years of rule by the Antichrist. You know, go to Revelation chapter 13, verses one through seven, right? Um, the Lord Jesus Christ will lead his army of saints, right? His army of saints, right? You know, his armies of saints, right? Um, back down to the earth to, um, uh, to defeat the Antichrist, right? This, again, also proves that soul sleep is not biblical, right? So the Lord Jesus Christ leads the armies which are in heaven, right? Of course, it refers to his saints, right? Verse 15, Out of his mouth go the sharp sword, sword, and that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fiercest of and wrath of Almighty God, and hath on his vestry and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So the Bible is very clear that the saints of God during the second coming of Christ will defeat the Antichrist, the beast, and his army. And of course, we see that the, the beast and the false prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire, right? So um, so the Bible, so I want you to all look very carefully. The Bible says, you know, that Jesus, right, he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Right. So that means that the Lord Jesus Christ will be very, this will not, he won't be playing games. You know, today's world, we witness, you know, perverted, you know, justice, you know, our crim, our perverted so called criminal justice system, or, you know, the worst offenders often get only a few years, or worse, they get away with crimes outright. And, you know, whereas lesser offenders, such as those who've dealt drugs, you know, get heavy sentences, or worse, innocent people, you know, get harassed and bullied by child protective services or some, Something like that, but this will not be the case during the millennial reign. The Bible says he shall rule them with a rod of iron. 
it means Jesus Christ will not be playing games. Yes, this will be a this will be a, a just government. Okay. Yes, this will be a government that deals with, you know, sin, you know, swiftly and yes, and severely. Okay. Yes, and you know, guess what law is the Lord going to be using, right? It's going to be using it's going to be the law of Moses. Now we all understand that the law, the, the ceremonial laws have been about the animal sacrifices, right? These things have been done away with Christ. But there are also a lot of laws in the law of Moses that deal with civic government, right? You know, the, what does the Bible say in Psalm chapter 19, verse 7? The Bible says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, the testimony of the Lord, is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, to rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and a honeycomb. The Bible is very clear that the law of the Lord is perfect, right? So we understand that there are laws pertaining to animal sacrifices, which have been done away in Christ. There are also laws related to civic government, right? Under the law of Moses, right? You know, the Bible, you know, has, you know, has very strict punishments for serious crimes, such as kidnapping, you know, murder, you know, rape and stuff like that. So, yeah, the Bible says, you know, in Exodus chapter 21, verse 12, he that smiteth the man so that he die, he shall, sh shall surely be put to death. So the Bible says, you know, also in verse 16, he, he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. The Bible is very clear that, you know, yeah, you know, serious crimes, like kidnapping, murder, yeah, death penalty, right? Death penalty, right? Death, death penalty, right? You know, yeah. So the Bible has a very strict law, right? You know, eye for eye, truth for truth, hand for hand, foot for foot. And yeah, the Lord, the government of the Lord Jesus Christ, this will be a government, right, that enforces such laws, enforces the laws of the Bible, right, these real just laws, right, you know, these, these just laws, right, and um, so now we were to go to a Deuteronomy, you know, yeah, chapter 21, right, Deuteronomy chapter, you know, um, 21, right, the Bible says, right, so the Bible says, right, you know, what is God's punishment? You know, what is God's method of punishment for, you know, capital crimes, right? Verse 21, and all the men of his city shall stone with stones that he die. So shall thou put away evil from all you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. The Bible is very clear that, you know, God's method of criminal punishment is being stoned to death, right? You say, well, why is that? Because that stoning may be a painful way to die, granted. It may be a harsh punishment, but it works, right? Harsher punishments do deter people from doing such wicked things. Now let's go right now to over to the book of Isaiah chapter two. The book of Isaiah is full of, you know, chapters pertaining to this um, particular topic. And now, um, uh, now verse two, it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their Spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So, so the Bible is very clear that during this time, yeah, like the Lord will, you know, enforce his law. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. The Lord Jesus Christ will be reigning from where? From the city of Jerusalem, right? And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths, right? This will be a time of righteousness where righteousness will be reigning. In the modern world, with the modern world's full of sin, right? Evil is everywhere, right? There's sin everywhere. There's, you know, right now, in, you know, as we speak, there are people who are demonstrating in favor of Palestine, you know, who, you know, there's a load of other dark stuff happening in this world, right? The Bible promises of the day where Lord Jesus Christ will be reigning on this earth, right? He'll be reigning with his laws, right? 
in his judge and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against the nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So yeah, in our modern world, our modern world is full of warfare, right? Now I'm not a pacifist. I'm not against war. I believe sometimes war is necessary in order to defend oneself, one's freedom and one's nation. You know, I'm not against, you know, defense, defending oneself with deadly, deadly weapons. But realize this, during the millennial reign, there will be no more war, okay? There will be no more war during the millennial reign, right? Beat their swords into plowshares. That is really just a figuratively saying that, you know, they're, a lot of their military equipment, they'll be converted into perhaps uh, farming equipment, right? Plowshares are farming equipment, right? Pruning hooks are farming equipment, right? Swords, spears are weapons of war, right? You know, and plowshares, you know, pruning hooks are, you know, farming equipment, right? Now we all know that in the modern day, you know, lots of money gets spent on, you know, you know, the military industrial complex, right? The entire military industrial complex, the multi-million billion dollar industry, right? They sell tanks, you know, fighter jets, you know, you know, you name it, right? But during the millennial reign, there will be no such need, right? There will be no such thing. So I'm assuming that perhaps, you know, tanks will be converted, you know, into tractors. I'm not sure because we all know that tanks, you know, have they have caterpillars, right? Which make them suitable for going, you know, over, you know, mud, you know, and uh, <clears throat> some off-road, you know, surfaces, right? So that's my assumption, right? So the Bible is very clear that the Lord Jesus Christ, you when this will be a day of peace, right? This will be a time of great prosperity, right? Where the Lord will be ruling with his law, right? Yeah, now go with your Bibles over to Isaiah chapter 9. The, it says in verse number 6, For unto us a child is son, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. Wonderful counsel of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So, the Bible is very clear that there will be a time where the Lord Jesus Christ will be ruling really and reigning on this earth, right? And this is going to be an eternal government, right? You know, ultimately talk about the fact, ultimately talks about, you know, prophecies of the New Jerusalem, right? Which we'll be discussing in a minute, right? So here in um, uh, chapter Isaiah chapter 11, we can look, you know, very, 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 um, uh, we can read here, right? It says um, in verse one, and there shall come forth a rod, out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's in the bloodline of, you know, Jesse. And um, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. This is talking about, yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he will be ruling and reigning on this earth, he won't be playing any games. The Bible says, he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, right? Yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ will be executing the death penalty, you know, will be executing the death penalty. Yeah, you can bet that the, this will be a just government. And yes, this will be a government that enforces God's laws, God's perfect holy law. We've, As we saw, seen, you know, you don't want to be messing with God. You know, don't be messing with God. You might be able to mess with our current corrupt government, our sorry, you know, excuse of a government. You know, whether you be in, in the Western world, you know, in the Western world, you know, whether you be in China, you know, Russia, you know, these, you, you know, yeah. Well, all the corruption going on in our government today, you know, especially in places like Canada, you know, with, you know, like, yeah, we have a sweet, we have one sorry excuse of a government right now. But this will not be the case in the millennial reign because in Isaiah 11, verse 4, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. The Bible is very clear that the Lord will be judging righteously, right? Now, unfortunately, these days, the poor often have the less fortunate. They often have an unfair advantage in the justice system. They don't have the money to hire the lawyers, right? Whereas the rich, you know, they can just do whatever they want and just get away with it. But it's by hiring the best lawyers just to get them out of it, right? You know? And righteousness shall be the girl of his loins, and faithfulness is the girl of his race. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. 
So now this, right, is talking about time. So one thing is that we know that is that we, we all know that, you know, we know that wolves, right, you know, leopards, right, you know, lions, right, they are known to be to be to to be prey on other animals, right? They are called, you know, predators, right? We call them predators. We call them carnivores, right? Because they eat meat, right? You know, of course, we know that wolves in modern day, they 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 eat lambs, right? Leopards, they can eat, you know, goats, right? You know, and lions, they can eat, you know, you know, cat eat cows, you know, they eat, you know, other stuff, right? But during the millennial reign, this will no longer be the case. Animals, all animals will be converted to a vegetarian diet. During this time, all animals will be herbivores. All animals will, will suddenly will have adopted a vegetarian diet, will become herbivores again. Just like, you know, the humble rabbit, right? There will no longer be, you know, any eating meat, you know. So, yeah, right. Uh, so, so yeah, the Bible says, and the, suck, the sucking child shall play on the whole asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day shall there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. The Bible is very clear, right? You know, in, in verse 12 says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together all the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth, right? So yeah, the Lord will be gathering together Israel, right? During this time, right? You know, taking them, right? You know, so yeah. So this will be an amazing time, right? We learned several things in chapter 11, right? Yeah, the Lord Jesus Christ is not going to be playing games, right? Yeah, if you do wicked during that time, whether, you know, kidnapping, murder, rape, stuff like that. Yeah, guess what? Off with your head, my friend. You don't want to be messing with God. You know, you can try messing with our government these days. You know, our government's one sorry excuse of a government, you know, but yeah, you know, but if you try messing with God, it's not going to end well for you, my friend. So your best bet is to just really obey his laws, right? But most importantly, you don't want to face God's eternal wrath in hell. You, I'd rather you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior right now, right? Except believe on what Jesus did on the cross to save you, right? So, yeah, right? So, yeah. Now, you know, if we go right now to uh, chapter 12, right? Chapter 12, right? So the Bible is very clear that it says, and in that day shall I say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. So, yeah. So, now, if we were to go to Isaiah chapter 35, we read a little bit more of this, right? The wilderness and, excuse me, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose, right? The Bible is very clear that there will be time, during that time, the desert will, will be blossom. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto him the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. So the Bible's very clear also, right? Mankind will no longer be plagued with diseases and disabilities, verses 5 and 6. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears, ears of the deaf be, shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out in streams in the desert. So yeah, even you know, in the wilderness and the desert, you know, there will be streams, right? You know, there will be prosperity, right? And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Yeah, right. So, yeah. So, isn't this an amazing time? You know, the earth will once again prosper, and God will be removing, you know, the what he's the the curse that he that he you know hit the earth with. You know, after Adam's sin, right? You know, God hit us with pretty heavy penalties, you know, pretty severe, you know, penalties. You know, a pretty big curse after Adam's sin, but even more so after the flood, right? So we all understand, right? You know that um prior you know to the flood right prior to the flood mankind you know at for example adam lived 900 years or mankind lived for hundreds and hundreds of years right but 
the good news is, you know, right. I'm in a, yeah, but after the flood, you know, we understand that man lifespans shortened considerably. I believe there can be multiple factors. Number one, genetics. Number two, you know, the flood altered the earth, right? Altered the complete, the nature of the earth, right? You know, I'm not, you know, a biologist. I don't know exactly what happened, but yeah, I believe that the flood drastically altered the earth in significant ways that mankind's lifespans are much became much shorter and mankind became much sicklier right now in isaiah chapter 65 verse 20 there sh shall be no more thence an infant of days nor an old man that hath not filled his days. for the child shall die a hundred years old but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed so the bible is very clear that you know during the millennial reign mankind will once again live for hundreds and hundreds of years Dying at 100 years old will, you know, be very, will seem very young. But these days, these days, you know, 100, you're lucky to live to be 100 years old, right? 100, not that many people can do it, you know. And it shall be houses and inhabitants. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain nor bring forth trouble for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. So the Bible is very clear that, during this time, you know, the work, they shall not labor in vain. This means that there will no longer be, you know, troubling, you know, difficult labor, right? You know, because if you, you know, go back to Genesis, to the book of Genesis, chapter 3, right? You know, you know, the Bible is very clear, right? You know, the Bible is very clear, right? You know, in Genesis, chapter 3, verse 7. 17, 18, or 17, 18, 19. And under Adam, he said, because thou hast carcined unto the worst of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree, which of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and so shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the soil of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So the Bible says, you know, God says to Adam that as a result of his sin of eating the forbidden fruit, yeah, curse the ground for thy sake, right? Mankind has to labor, you know, perform very difficult, sometimes back-breaking labor to get his food, right? This will no longer be the case during the millennial reign, right? Now, in verse 25, you know, very important again, you know, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, save the Lord. Wow. So this verse, again, confirms that the lion, you know, will be eating straw, right? Lions, you know, these carnival, carnivorous animals, they will stop eating, you know, meat. They will stop eating meat. They'll just be eating, you know, plants, you know, once again, right? The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Nowadays, we know that the wolf would, wolves would eat lambs, right? This will no longer be the case during, you know, the, <clears throat> the during, you know, the millennial reign, right? You know, if you go to back now to First Samuel chapter, you know, 17, right? You know, David, right? David. David, right? David, right? It says, um, David, um, you know, David, right? You know, and he's when he goes through the famous storm where David goes up against Goliath, right? When he wants to go, now it says in verse 32, verse 32, and David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. So now we all see that, you know, David, right, and this says, you know, that he has already fought against lions and bears who tried to, you know, eat his father's sheep, right? But guess what? During this time, there will be no wolves, you know, will no longer be eating lambs, or the lion, you know, will no longer be eating lambs. The lion will just be eating straw, right? This is going to be a pretty good time. This is going to be a fantastic time, right? And as Christians, right, if you're a saved person in today's age, you know, if you're a saved person, right, you know, yeah, rest assured, you will not have you will not have to face second sick face a second death, right? You know, you get to reign and rule around with the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years, right? That isn't that amazing? That's something that makes me very excited.
And now what is the second death? The second death is being thrown at the lake of fire and brimstone, right? To be tormented forever and ever with Satan, right? Now, if you're watching this video and if you're not saved, hear the bad news. You're on your way to hell. If you were to die in this moment, you go to hell. And you will not be taken up in the rapture of the church, but you will be going through the tribulation a horrible time. If you don't want to go to hell, please, my friend, trust on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Trust on Jesus today. He lived a perfect life. He was nailed to a cross. He rose again the third day. Trust in him, and you will be passed from death into life. God bless you.